All right, welcome back. And we're still having a discussion, a focus this morning. It's all about the decision that was made yesterday by President Uhuru Kenyatta, including a statement when it comes to, you know, bringing some development within the agricultural sector. And with me in studio, I still have uh, Gabriel Muthuma seated, seated on my right. <laughs> and he's a governance uh, expert and Michael Ogwanda, political analyst on my left. And Mr. Ogwanda, before um, uh, Ibrahim Karanja got the sentiments of people in Nyeri Town, you wanted to respond to something that Mr. Gabriel Muduma had said. Specifically about Honorable Kujuri, mm. I think Kujuri needs to live honorably. He cannot go out there and tell the world that I saw it coming. I saw it coming. Oh, it was coming. And then he never resigned. If you know that you're not able to perform, you know your boss is not happy with you, and you know that it's specifically about your work, and that your ministry is not performing, why do you want to see this thing as something coming, 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 <laughs> coming, and hoping that it will fall on you instead of honorably saying, I think my relationship with the president, who is my employer in this case, is not where it's supposed to be. And I also think that perhaps I failed my president in the Ministry of Agriculture. And for that reason, I resigned. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with the Kenyans? With us sticking to a place until our butts are kicked out of a place instead of saying, honorably, I think I have not been able to deliver my services, so, both to the president uh, and to the nation, mm -hmm. because there have been issues in agriculture. So the, this issues. has nothing to do with the Kujuri's politics, because he's also a politician. Nothing. Yes, he's a politician. But for you to tell your employer that, you know, I, I saw it coming, but I was just waiting, hoping that it wouldn't come, but finally it's come, mm -hmm. it's probably the lowest such a man could go. I mean, the president employed Kujuri. This Tomorrow is going to be there. Who knows what the president was planning for him, even if he was planning something for him after this. We've seen cabinet ministers drop. Mm -hmm. We saw a former, his, his immediate predecessor, immediate uh, uh, minister of, uh, of, uh, of, for, I mean, of agriculture, was appointed to JIC. He's yes. now in JIC. In fact, shortly before that, he was handling some stuff at, at IBC. Sure. So you can see that it perhaps is not over as this man is trying to put it to the president that he saw it. And, and I Again, for him to say that indeed a lot of things had happened, there were also a, a lot of good things that happened as he was putting it in his press statement in the newspaper as well as on the press. A lot has happened. Good. But a lot more has happened so badly that this country has suffered from less sugar with whatever you want impurities right. of so, so Mr. And nobody can even tell you so Mr. where Gwanda, that sugar is today. Talking about, the ministry, ministry. talking about the Ministry of Agriculture, within President Uru's time in office, this is the third cabinet secretary all right. yeah. in the Ministry of Agriculture yes. during President Uhuru Kenyatta's time. And the other two were fired. Kiunjuri again has been fired, the third cabinet secretary to be fired. So what is wrong with the Ministry of Agriculture? I know what is wrong with the Ministry of Agriculture. I think the president is himself a farmer. He comes from, um, uh, I mean, Mount Kenya region that has been known for coffee for generation and generation. I was just abroad a few, uh, you know, a, a day ago, and, and I met some people who said, we drink your coffee in, in Middle East, a lot of our coffee. Our coffee is the most expensive coffee in Middle East. Now, the president, their family have been coffee farmers. He knows the problem that is in coffee. We know that Rift Valley, I mean, uh, Mount Kenya and Rift Valley, certain areas, have also been growing tea. We know that there are cartels in tea, and the president keeps on talking about the cartels in coffee, cartels in, in tea, the cartels in sugar, the cartels in rice. The president knows. I strongly believe that when Kiyun Juri was put in this position, mm -hmm. was to stop the cartel. All right. Perhaps he did not stop the cartel, mm -hmm. but instead became part of the cartel. <laughs> and, and that is why, at that point, these at that three point, minutes, are uh -huh. being kicked out mm -hmm. in uh, Uru's government. Mm -hmm. I think it's only in Minister of Agriculture where now we are receiving And at that the point, Mr. Gwanda can say those are your sentiments. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the sentiments of the KTN <laughs> News. Yes, yes. Oh, you've been kicked. <laughs> no, I, I have to, I have to yeah, make I that very I, clear, I, I, you I know. know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when we talk about the reshuffle, Mr. Muthuma, right. we are seeing, can I call them political regents? In yes, cabinet? Could, well, uh, look at the likes of uh, Mutahi Kagwe, okay. taken to the Ministry of uh, Health. Look at Wavinian Deti, right. who didn't win the Machakos gubernatorial seat, right. has been brought to the cabinet as a CAS. 
you see, political rejects, it's a very loosely, uh, uh, it's, it's a very loose term in Kenya. And uh, the reason why I hate calling it political rejects, it's, it's, it's because of the definitive answer I gave you earlier on. Good politicians in this country will always find time or mm -hmm. will always find a platform to reinvent themselves. They, when you tell or when you say somebody is a political reject, uh, you are basing your argument on the truth that he was not elected. Mm -hmm. The president today of this country, remember, was at one point rejected by the people of Gatundu. Did that make him a political reject? He is today the president of this country. So that's why I'm telling you, a political reject, a political reject is a very loosely mm -hmm. uh, a, a term used in politics. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes I am very mindful of bringing mm -hmm. that into the real politics mm -hmm. of our time. People reinvent themselves. Haven't you had somebody telling you, ah, we are Mekusha? But soon, before you say cut and a half, that man has already made it back into the political limelight and probably has gotten on to get a very big office, just like what you've just told us. Mm -hmm. Look at Mutai Kagwe. Mutai Kagwe was one of, I would say in our time, he was one of the best ICT ministers. You know, uh, the fact that probably he could not get the, 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 a, a good marination with the electorate back then, you know, does not make him, you know, uh, yeah. a bad leader. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think, yes, you've hired people who found Klama again, mm -hmm. the likes of uh, Wavinia Deti and uh, Mota Ikagwe, but we have to wait and see what they are going to bring onto the table. I mean, those are two great dockets that they've, uh, right. that they've gotten. Mm -hmm. um, but the message that I think also needs to be amplified or emphasized in uh, the docket of agriculture is what the president did thereafter. Nakuru, he said he's actually ordering a deep sea, uh, 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 what you would call, more like a deep sea in, uh, investigation mm -hmm. into the ongoings of the Minister of Agriculture because he still feels there is something that is, has not seated right or is mm -hmm. not sitting pretty in, within, within that ministry. And true to the fact, Michael Agonda will tell you, there are so many cartels within the Ministry of Agriculture. There are so many middlemen who are actually hurting real farmers, real, real farmers who are, you know, uh, waking up early in the morning, putting their work, putting their sweat, their energy into it, and actually harvesting peanuts. Yet there are people who own no land, they are just wheeler dealers, and they are taking home the big cash. And that's what the president is concerned about. And I can see why he has actually become so angered by some of the activities that are going through the Minister of Agriculture. But he did not stop there. He actually threw a very serious responsibility to the judiciary. Mm -hmm and give them uh, an, an example mm -hmm. of the Akasha brothers in, in the U.S. Within and a year. Within a, these people, 20-something years, they are going to be put behind bars. And that's not only it. You remember the chicken gate? The chicken gate. The guys in the U.K. have actually served prison time, and they've come out back to society. In Kenya, yeah, no, nothing, has, nothing. nothing has happened. So what was the, what was the president saying, mm -hmm. actually? He was saying, you know what? The judiciary must face the realities of our time. They must subject themselves to the reality of convicting mm -hmm. people who have actually been found right. culpable. And I agree with him because it cannot be business as usual when other jurisdictions are finding people guilty and then we say we are a progressive country with a very good constitution but yet the very same people who are gerrymandering and walking and painting the cities of our country red, we could not even put one Right. one of them in jail, um, you know? So I, I think what the president is really trying to tell the judiciary is, guys, get you serious. Together. You know, All please right. stop those issues about Mercedes-Benzes are not <laughs> attending, you know, right. uh, 